What's up, code crashers? Welcome back to Skill Curve. Meta unleashes Code Llama 70B, an enormous and huge model, and we are putting it to the test. Yo, code warriors! Skill Curve welcomes you to this amazing video. Meta just dropped a coding bomb with the release of Code Llama 70B, the biggest baddest open source AI coding model yet. We are talking 70 billion parameters of pure coding power ready to supercharge your workflows and level up your skills. But is it all the hype or is this the real deal? In this video, we will be diving deep into code Llama 70B using LM Studio, the ultimate platform for experimenting with AI models and my favorite one. We'll put it through its paces with real-world coding challenges, analyze its strengths and weaknesses, and tell you everything you need to know about this game-changing tool. Hit that subscribe button, smash the notification bell, and let's get coding with AI. Alright, so we'll be using LM Studio for the testing part. I actually love this software because it's so easy to use and it's like really a great one. So what you need to do, you just need to open up the LM Studio, and there you need to type in the search bar like code llama 70 b and just click on this go button it will open a lot of models for you so i will be testing out this one from bloke and the python version okay i already downloaded this one you can see here that the size is huge it's like almost 50 gigabytes and it's like a really huge and enormous model. Let's start the testing process. For that, I will just simply move on to the chat section. And here I need to load the model. So I will simply click on this thing and just then select my model. It will take a while to load up the model for you. You just need to wait for a while. All right, so our model has been loaded successfully. So let's start the testing process. So I will start off with the basics in Python. So I will give it a prompt like write a Python function that calculates the factorial of a given positive integer. So I'll simply hit enter and see like how it will perform in this particular scenario. All right, it just gave me this line of code and it seems like really spot on and correct. So I will definitely give it a pass in this particular scenario. So now next I'm moving towards like the data structures I would say like create a dictionary in Python that maps student names to their corresponding grades. For example, Alice 90, Bob 85. Add a new student, Charlie, with a grade of 78. Okay, so let's try to submit and see like how it actually performs in this particular scenario. Well, yeah, the code seems correct. Okay, you can see right over here, first of all, it just created a student dictionary, which is equals to like, the value of Alice 90 and Bob 85. And in Python, we can actually specify a new value like this by giving the key and then equals to the value. So this is fine and it will actually print the whole dictionary. So that's great. So all right, now let's see how it will perform in like control structures. If I just give it a prompt, like write a Python program that checks if a given year is leap or not. Well, it seems good. Well, I'm really curious to test this out. All right, uh, let me just call the function check year, and I will provide in 2024 because I know it's a leap year. So yeah, that is a leap year. Let's see like 2020. That was also the previous leap year. Yeah, it works. Let me just try to see 2022, not a leap year. So yeah, the code is actually working great. And it used like if else, with a charm and ease, you can see right over here. So yeah, that's a definite pass. Now let's try to see it from like file handling perspective. So I would say like read a text file named sample.txt and count the occurrences of the word Python. Let's see how it performs in this particular scenario. All right, it just gave me this line of code. Okay, so I'm really interested to test this out like whether it is correct or not. Yeah, you can see right over here that first of all, there is problem of like uh, the commas. Yeah, that's understandable because it might be the difference in the UI. So that's not an issue. So I'll solve it. Okay, now the code actually seems fine. Now let me just simply create a new file and I can just create a text file 
save it as like sample.txt and here I can like write anything. I can say like Python, Python once again, once again Python. So let's see whether it counts the occurrence of Python in this file or not. So let's try to run this file and see like how it actually performs in this particular scenario. So yeah, you can see right over here that the code is working as it should. So yeah, I am pretty much satisfied with this output. So all right, now let's try to see it from like object oriented programming perspective. So I'll give it a prompt like define a Python class a rectangle with attributes length and width implement methods to calculate its area and perimeter. So I'll simply hit enter and let's try to see like how it performs in this particular scenario. So yeah, this one seems like really great. Okay, you can see that perimeter is actually the formula is implemented right. And this one also like seems great. All right, this implementation seems good. This is the class and these are the two functions. So yeah, that's fine. So I can say that it is actually performing really well. Now let's try to see it from like string manipulation perspective. So I can give it a prompt like write a Python function that takes a sentence as input and returns the reverse of each word. For example, if the input is hello world, the output should be like this, the other way, like the reverse way around. So I'll simply hit enter. All right, so this is the code which it gave back. Okay, so let me just try to test this out. So here is the code. Let me just try to call this function down here. I could say like, hello, how are you doing? I can wrap it around like print statement. Yeah, you can see that it has reversed it. Okay, I have given it a prompt like that the word should be reversed like separately not like combined okay like the combined whole sentence so yeah it actually did a great job here as well so all right now let's try to see it from like error handling perspective so i could simply give it a prompt like create a python program that reads an integer from the user handle any exceptions value error that may occur if the input is not a valid integer so let's see how it will cater with this particular scenario yeah, I just wrapped it inside of like try accept block. So all right, let me just try to test this code. It says enter a number, suppose I enter five, which is actually a valid integer. So it actually shuts down. That's perfect. And if we just try to enter like some floating point values, not an integer. So it says that that wasn't an integer. So it actually works as it should. So that's great. All right, coders, we have taken code Llama 70B for a spin in LM Studio. And let me tell you, it's definitely got some serious potential. It impressed us with its code generation skills, tackling diverse challenges with surprising accuracy and flexibility. While it's not without its limitation, it's clear that this model is a powerful tool for both experienced developers and those just starting out. But remember, Code Llama 70B is still under development and we can expect some bugs in this particular model. And the field of AI assisted coding is rapidly evolving. So what are your thoughts? Did Code Llama pass the test for you as well? Leave a comment below and share your experiences with this massive model. And don't forget to smash that subscribe button and join the notification squad for more exciting dives into the world of AI and coding. We have got tons of new experiments and comparisons planned. So stay tuned. Until next time, keep coding, keep learning, and keep pushing the boundaries with AI.